Good afternoon from my parents' house. <laughs> yes, I am still here. And I'm trying to get some filming done before my parents get back because then it's me, my mom, and dad all in this, I wouldn't say small, but it's a two bedroom condo in Chicago. So it's a little bit small for three people, especially three people who are trying to get work done. So yeah, I'm curious how long I can last living at my parents. My mom is trying to convince me to stay here until the end of the year. I don't know if I can do that. I, I feel strongly that I need my own place. So if you know of any places in LA, I'm being very picky because I'm not having to be forced to move there yet, but I want my own home and I want to create decorating content. Every time I stay at my parents, I always appreciate how homey my mom makes this house feel. And I feel like I try to do that within my own home. So I wanted to talk about ways you can make your home feel just a little bit happier because that is just so important to have a space that you feel happy in. And if you don't feel very happy in your home or comfortable, or you just feel like some things could be upgraded, watch this video because I'm going to talk about ways to make your home feel just a little bit happier. First things first, people, if you have a fireplace, you better use your fireplace. We use that fireplace all of the time. Even in the summer, if it's a rainy day, we will light the fireplace. I grew up where the fireplace was put on every single morning in the winter. We always had a fire going and I'm telling you, it changes your entire life if we're gonna get dramatic, but it does. If you have a fireplace, light a fire. It's really not that difficult to do. And it just, it's like having candles lit, but even better. So light your fireplace, easy, simple as that. When you move into a home, how do you decide which rooms to decorate first or what rooms to focus on first? And I think it's important as parents to create spaces for yourselves before you create spaces for your kids. Does that make sense? I don't have kids, so maybe, maybe I'm wrong on this, but I truly believe that you should create a master bedroom that makes you feel happy because that all trickles down into the happiness of the whole house. So when you first get a place or if you're deciding on what type of room to really put time and effort into, I suggest putting your effort into your master bedroom. Get a good mattress, get good sheets, get good bedding, decorate your master before any other room in the home because having your own room that you can, you know, relax in, you can refresh your mind, you have a space that's just yours, unless, you know, kids, they go everywhere, but that is a space that I think can be the root of happiness within your home and then focus on other rooms in the house. When I was growing up, my parents never ever ended up decorating their master bedroom. They decorated every other room in the house but their master bedroom. We lived there for over 20 years and they never decorated their bedroom. They had like a nice headboard, I guess, but it was never the focus. And as I got older, I was like, mom, why, why did you decorate you know, the basement where you never even go before your own bedroom? I think it's important to put yourself first. If you put yourself first, your mind is better and then it, it ends up trickling down in other ways. So um, yeah. Decorate your own bedroom first. Speaking of bedrooms, obviously some bedrooms, there's only one layout you can do, but there is a thing in feng shui where if you're laying on your bed, you're supposed to be able to see out of your door. It's supposed to create a sense of comfortability and safeness where you can see who's walking in your room. And I do agree that it makes your room feel just better and more welcoming. So if you're laying on your bed, you want to be able to look out the door. Sometimes that's not possible, I get it, but it's feng shui. And I've lived by that rule since I uh, uh, learned it, I guess. It's called the command position. Look it up. It really, it really, feng shui is proven to change your mood and your mind. So maybe we should do a whole video on feng shui. I'm not, I don't know much about it, but maybe we could bring someone in. Decor rotation. This is important when 
decluttering your home, I think an obvious step to making your house a more happy one is decluttering. But sometimes it's like you don't wanna get rid of all of this stuff. So I call it decor rotation and it also is important to do toy rotation too if you have kids. With this concept, you minimize what's out on your counters and what's on your shelves, but you don't get rid of it. You just kind of put it into storage and you can rotate it throughout you know, the seasons or whatever if you get sick of it. So if you have candlesticks and books and magazines and bowls, you know, take away a few items if you feel like it's too cluttered. Put them in a drawer in your credenza or put them down in the basement. And then that way things are feeling a little bit more fresh and then every now and then you can go you know, switch them out depending on your mood. And that goes hand in hand with toy rotation with kids. If you have a really cluttered kids playroom or bedroom, basically what you do is you put the toys away. You put half of the toys away, you know, in the basement or whatever, in their closet, out of sight, out of mind. And then every few months you kind of rotate the toys out so kids start to feel like, they have new toys, but in reality, they've had them all along. You're just kind of rotating them to, you know, keep them, keep them on their toes. And it also declutters, so toy rotation and decor rotation. And speaking of decluttering, I think it's super important to have enclosed storage. So if you're getting, let's say, a TV cabinet, don't get something that has open shelving. Get something that is enclosed. That way you can hide all of the unnecessary crap in enclosed cabinets. And I, th I feel strongly about this in any room of the house. I think enclosed cabinetry is super important because you don't want to have everything on display. It can make your space feel cluttered. And I think if you have things hidden, it uh, can make your house feel like a happier home because a clean home is a happy home. And instead of me telling you to get rid of stuff, instead just hide away things as much as possible or rotate them, you know. Lighting, good lighting, it's one of the main things I talk about on this channel, but I think utilizing as much natural light as possible is really going to boost your mood. So if you don't have a ton of lighting in your home, I think it's important to focus on the areas that can provide you that natural light and accelerate it by maybe even adding in a mirror across from where you get natural light so that way it bounces off and provides you with a little bit more light because lighting is everything and natural lighting right now i only film on natural light because i think it just looks the best and if you have just peaks of it put in a mirror across from the window if you can on any of the walls in that room it will help bounce the light and you'll just get more light because that's what you want and open your blinds and open your curtains and open your windows in the summertime i think fresh air light it can do so much for your mood. And sometimes I go over to people's homes and they like won't have their blinds open or something. I'm like, how do you, how do you not wake up and open every inch of light in your home? Cause that's what I do at least. I have to have every single blind open or else it's like, you're not fully awake. I need every bit of sunshine. On top of having your windows open, have your doors open. In my Chicago place, I didn't have a ton of lighting, so I always had my front door open all the time. If it was nice out, front door was always open. I mean, there was a screen door there, so it's not, you know, bugs aren't getting in and stuff. Having your door open can just give you that indoor-outdoor feel, and it makes you feel good to be outside. So keep open your windows and keep open your doors. Anything to bring in light, anything, color, color. We've talked about color a million times. It is a proven fact that having color in your home can help your mood. So if you have a very bare, minimal, you know, colorless home, try adding in color, even if it's just through having yellow tulips on the counter. Add in color in ways where it doesn't last if you're scared of it. Add in bowls of fruit on your countertop or florals. Add in pieces of color that aren't permanent if you're scared of adding in permanent pieces of color. Obviously, I love color, especially through smaller things like arts or throw pillows or coffee table books. Those are all very easy ways to add in color. But if you're scared, try adding in color in areas where you know it will be gone in a week or two. So get that, get that fruit out on your counter because looking at that color, it's gonna be nice. I'm doing a whole video on where did color go 
soon because I feel like I've been talking about it a lot and we need to know why, why, do, we, why do we hate color? Why are we scared of color? Because it's so nice for your brain. And we're going to end on one of my all time favorite tips for when you live in, let's say a small dark condo or you have an apartment complex where some of your windows look out onto alleyways or nothing. For example, my place in Chicago, my bedroom window looked out onto this literally like the smallest courtyard. So basically we just never opened the blinds because we weren't getting any light and it was just like a sad view. But I've recently discovered this new little trick to kind of make those moments feel a little happier. I wish I knew about this before, like in my Chicago place, or I thought about this before, but adding a piece of art to your window. Yes, it sounds strange because why would you put a piece of art over your window? But if you're never ever using that window, like it goes out onto nothing, it's a dark hole, take some command strips, put them on the back of a piece of art and stick it up on the window. I absolutely love how this looks. I'm actually working on this for my parents' place. They have a few windows that literally look out into nothing. Like their bathroom window is basically dark. Like they're never going to open that window. And I think adding in a cool piece of art over that is just a way to make a really unhappy dark area feel just a little brighter and a little happier because that's what this whole video is about is how to make your space feel happier. And I feel like all these tips are super helpful. Let me know what you think down below because you know I'm all about having a home that feels good and happy and you know, it's important. You spend a lot of time in your home. You gotta make it a space you like. You just, you just do. Um, all right, uh, see you next week. I wanna do another home review. I wanna do a home review of Sienna Miller, but I think people are getting a little bit more on top of their copyright claims because my Gwyneth Paltrow home review just completely got taken down for copyright. I don't feel like I had that much stuff in there. It was a lot of me talking over the footage and stuff, but I think they just don't want their footage used at all. So I don't know. I'm kind of scared to put in all my time and effort into making another AD home review when it's just going to get taken down. So let me know your thoughts. If you, should I try or do we not care about those? Whatever. All right. See you next week. I don't, Wednesday or Sunday. I don't know. I'm about to go on a huge job with Target. I'm doing a big prop selling job with Target out in New York. So we might be a little behind on, on some videos, but I'll be back. Don't you worry. And maybe I'll eat my parents still. We don't know. We don't know. Subscribe if you want to see where I end up. It's going to be somewhere cool because I'm that picky. <laughs> okay. Bye.